was on his way to Jerusalem to begin the passion of his Christ. But he had to go through Jericho. And as he was going into Jericho, he was outside the city gates and he healed a man who was blind. And so obviously, because something so miraculous as healing a blind man had happened, a, a crowd was gathered. The crowd was loud and excited because maybe something else might happen. And there, there on the outskirts of the crowd was a man, a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. He had this desire to see who Jesus was, but he had, he had a problem. See, Zacchaeus was a <laughs> short man. Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man. So he couldn't see Jesus. Nothing was wrong with his eyes, like the blind man, but he had something, some inadequacy in his life. He was short. Now, although he was a short man, he was a very determined man. Although he was small in stature, he had passion and drive to get what he wanted. And so he decided to run ahead of the crowd, run ahead of the very thing that was blocking him from seeing Jesus, and he climbed into the sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus when he passed by climbed up into the perfect sycamore tree. You see, this tree had to have branches that were low enough for him to get on, to climb up, but it also had to be tall enough so that he could see over the crowd. The perfect tree. Could it be that God, who is the creator of heaven and earth, God, who is the Alpha and Omega, God, who knows our beginning, middle, and end, could it be that God made and purposed and planned for that specific tree to be in that specific spot for this specific yes. moment? Yes. Zacchaeus climbed up that tree so that he might see <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus indeed came right to that spot as he was passing by. He looked up the tree. He looked at Zacchaeus and he called him by name. For today, I must stay at your house. I must stay at your house. Imagine how that must have felt to Zacchaeus. Imagine how his heart must have been blessed. I can imagine he was thinking, surely Jesus knows who I am. Surely Jesus knows my yesterday. That I have some shortcomings, that I've had some failures, that I have a, a lust for money, that I have a greed to gain. Even if it means by any means necessary, I will sell out my own Jewish brothers and sisters and work for the Romans. Surely Jesus must know my yesterday. 
And yet, he wants to come to my house today? Something happened to Zacchaeus' heart. He took this leap of faith into the arms of Jesus. He came down that tree and he welcomed Jesus with joy. He welcomed the Lord into his home. But you know, haters gonna hate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Haters gonna hate, so just shake it off. The crowd. The crowd was murmuring. The crowd was muttering. They were grumbling. They were complaining. They were, they were like, what? <laughs> OMG, Jesus is going to this man's house, this sinner? I mean, he's not just a sinner. He's the chief sinner of the town. He's just not a regular tax collector that cheats people. No, he is the chief tax collector. He's the number one sinner in town. And Jesus gives this person the honor of his presence. Yeah. <coughs> Jesus picks the one who has the power, the one who has the influence. He picks the chief tax collector to offer him salvation today. <clears throat> because he's the one who has influence over a whole group of sinners. And maybe tomorrow, this one man can share the hope and love of Christ with someone else to make an eternal difference in their life. <clears throat> Zacchaeus. His heart was changed. And he confirms the difference that had happened in his life just then. And he looks at Jesus and he says, look, Lord, half of all my possessions, half of all my riches today, I will give to the poor. Half of everything I have, I will give to the because his heart had been transformed, he took it a step further. He said, if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will restore it four times the amount. Four times the amount. Jesus looked at him and he said, oh, today salvation has come to this house. Because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man comes to seek and to save those who are lost. The Son of Man comes <coughs> to seek and to save those who are lost. Maybe, maybe you found yourself in life coming up short that you have a desire, you have a goal, but it seems like you're short on time, you're short on money, you're short on, on love, you're, you're, you're short maybe even on faith. Mm -hmm. Could it be that God has positioned and planned and purposed some little things mm -hmm. in your journey to help you get to the destiny that God has called you too. For Zacchaeus, it was a tree. And maybe for you, it's a message that comes across the TV, a song that comes on the radio, a word, a phrase that someone says who doesn't even know your situation, and yet God has purposed and planned you to be right there to intersect with that thing. Jesus is passing through Point Seattle today. The Spirit of the Lord is all running through these pews. And he's looking you in the eye. He's seeing you for who you are. 
beyond what we put on to look all great on Sunday. He sees you and he's looking at you and he says, my beloved child, today I must come to your house. Yes. Will you welcome the Lord with joy? Will you say, yes, Lord. I know you know my yesterday, but today I want to say yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I want to have assurance for tomorrow, so I want to say yes, Lord. Today is the day to welcome God. If you never made a commitment to Christ, if you've never said yes to the Lord, today is a great day to do that. There are yellow connect cards in the pew. You just say, I want to commit my life to Christ. <clears throat> or maybe you're saying, I've been out there for a while, but Lord, I'm ready to come back. I, I hear you looking, I hear you calling my name. And I want to recommit my life to Christ. <laughs> Again, you can fill out that connect card. On Easter, we're going to have a baptism. Yeah. It's Beautiful. We have plenty of room up here for the altar. For other people who might say, yeah, I'm ready to receive that grace that God freely gives. I'm ready to be identified with Christ. If you desire to be baptized, fill out the yellow connect card. Give it to me at the door. And the last thing, maybe... Maybe Jesus is calling your name and tugging on your heart to officially join. Maybe you're saying, I want to be a member of this church. I want to sign my name on the roll. We've got plenty of spaces on the roll. We have a space for you. But you want to be in covenant, not just a bystander. But you're ready to roll up your sleeves and put your name on the dotted line. We welcome you for membership. Again, that's on the yellow connect card. I'm grateful that we have a God yesterday, today, and forevermore. That there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We can have assurance for our tomorrows. Let us pray. Father God, we are again grateful. We love you and we thank you and we want to extend ourselves in a new way to say yes on today. We appreciate that you see us, that you notice us, that you name us, you call us to be in fellowship and in relationship with you and others. Thank you again, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.